What's Kevin O'Leary saying these days about commercial real estate? Could we be on the cusp of perhaps another banking bailout? Man, I hope not. And then finally, I want to catch you up on a conversation I had with Omar El Takori from the department, uh, someone I met over at the Think Media organization, really talk about something I think all of us full-time employees should be thinking about. But let's get into it right away with retail sales. Retail sales continues the economic numbers, metrics, whatever, by exceeding expectations. The long rumored demise of the consumer seems to be at least not yet. What happened? Retail sales were expected to grow 0.4% month on month. They actually grew 0.6. That 0.6 growth is the highest in 10 months and one of the highest readings in the last two years. So again, uh, at least through December, the consumer is still spending. We are spending on slightly different things than we were a year ago. It's more about services and the like. But yes, the consumer is still shopping. And when I read numbers like this and I see what's going on in the job market, I am left to ask what else does the market have to see to take a March rate cut off the table? All right, Sonny, their audience is telling me they hear you, so I guess we have to pick you up again. Yes, this little guy right here has learned to whine a little bit because he wants to be YouTube famous. So, Sonny, you are now YouTube famous. All right, so again, back to the retail numbers. Again, exceeding expectation. The economy is not falling off a cliff, uh, as many of the doomers have highlighted. The market has to wake up, I think. I think the market is still leaning heavy on a March rate cut. We'll get more on the weekly jobless claims and things of that nature tomorrow, right? Thur Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. That's the day you and I should watch. The first sign of cracks will show up for you and I in the weekly unemployment claims, right? Remember, uh, Citigroup, 20,000, some others. So um, we just got to watch, right? Are we going to see a jump from 202,000? It's got to be over 300. And really, folks, I think it's got to be over 325 to catch the attention of the Fed. Now, in fairness, it may not be about the number, 325. It may be about the speed. That could do it as well, right? We go from 202 to 248 to 287 in a three-week period. That might catch the attention. But now let's move on to Fed speak. We talked about Fed speak this week. We set it up. There's like nine or 10 uh, Fed presidents uh, discussing. And when I say Fed speak, again, I want to listen for three things. Are they talking hikes? Are they talking cuts? Are they giving us no rate cuts in 2024? Again, I think the Fed's job is to talk the market down. So we had two Fed presidents speak in the last 24 hours. Two more are speaking right now. Uh, Fed President Michael Barr. Fed President Michael Barr said something that I haven't heard from others yet. What did he say? He said, we are likely, likely at peak interest rates. Likely is an important word. They don't, they don't mess around. Likely means there could be another rate hike coming. Now, again, remember, I do not believe it for one second. But part of the Fed's job is to talk the market down from March rate cuts, in my opinion. I believe they want something May, June going forward. So that was Fed President Michael Barr. What did Fed President Chris Waller say yesterday? He said, in no uncertain terms, Fed cuts are coming. All right, we kind of knew that. But they have to be carefully calibrated. All right, smarty pants, what does that mean? I think that means their intention is to cut quarter points. As you remember, since we've been raising rates, we had several 50 basis point raises and we had four consecutive 75 uh, basis point moves for a total of 525. I believe the tinkering adjustments will be down in quarter point increments. They will not be coming in with a machete 
but instead using a scalpel. Next, Chris Waller says, we won't be rushed. Code four, in my opinion, yes, we see the market expecting March. Doesn't matter. We're not, we don't run the market. The market should follow us. And then finally, we need to be methodical and careful. I think all of this goes back to the point that they are not cutting in March and any first rate cuts will be a quarter point. So again, we have more Fed speak today. I will do my best to summarize them tomorrow and we will just keep listening to what they are really telling us. Um, next up, well, let's talk about Kevin O'Leary. Kevin O'Leary is out talking about commercial real estate collapsing, right? He's been talking about this for at least a year. There is a set of dominoes that he is highlighting that I think is interesting for us to follow. And it does really tie back to conversations we've had with Lance Lambert over at Resi Club. And it goes like this. The facts are that the regional banks balance sheets hold commercial real estate loans. Fact. It is estimated that up to 40% of the loans on their balance sheet are commercial real estate. That's a big number. So if we are operating in a world where commercial real estate must refi, we have higher than average vacancies and the cost of capital has doubled or tripled, it is just like we've talked about for over a year. The value of the building is less than the debt. This is the problem. You have to do a cash and refi, you have to extend and pretend, or you are going to take assets back. But this is what Kevin O'Leary points out in that chaos that I just described. Banks, i.e. regional banks, are also cutting off lending to new small businesses and medium businesses. So again, the impact of their balance sheet impairment, right, bad loans, is not only impacting kind of the existing balance sheet, but it will impact income, because why? Banks make money lending money. So the regional banking crisis could be in significant problems. So bank bailout. Again, this is a series of dominoes that I'm looking at going, it could go that way. I'm not calling for it. I just want to highlight how this kind of rolls together. And All Nighter Hyder is correct. Where I'm going with this is the BTFP, Bank Term Funding Whatever pro uh, program, I believe is set to expire in March. I believe it is the Fed's intention to retire that program. But just because that program gets retired doesn't mean it's not replaced with something else. Now remember, the bank term funding program was about the 10 year, right? Remember the regional bank, Silicon Valley Bank, bought all these treasuries at 1%, interest rates went up, their balance sheet was impaired, bingo, bango, out of business. So what if, just what if, the Fed sees the commercial real estate catastrophe and goes, you know what? We are going to tinker. We're going to pivot. We're going to, we're going to buy impaired loans if, if the commercial bank agrees to extend and pretend. Because again, the, the Fed's not going to buy these assets at face value taking a 40% loss day one. That's not happening. But I could envision, I could envision them saying, you know what, if you do a workout with that borrower, we will buy the value at par, meaning 100, and we will wait until sometime in the future we get refied out. I don't know that that's going to happen. I hope it doesn't happen. I'm not a fan of bank bailouts, but wow, I could see that coming. So again, we got to watch it. All right. We've been highlighting the commercial real estate pain, office, multifamily. And again, I want to be clear. A lot of people are talking office, including Kevin. The sign, the pain level, the threshold, the sheer amount of pain coming to multifamily, far greater. There's much more of it. There was much more stupid bridge loan. You've heard me, you've heard me rant against the syndicators before, so I won't do it again. But the multifamily pain, 
ultimately will dwarf Office, in my opinion. So other things that I wanted to talk about, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs is standing put. They are calling for three rate cuts in 2024. They are calling March, May, and June. To this end, folks, I want to ask you and all of these things a question. Do you think, just your opinion, your wild-ass guess, whatever you want, will the Fed cut rates in March? A simple yes or no? Leave the comments below. I just want to see what my audience is thinking. Are you thinking the Fed's going to cut or you think the Fed's going to hold in March? Simple question, please. Yes or no below, or if you are ultra lazy, just a Y and an N. I just want to know what you guys are thinking. Next up, I want, to, I want to put a topic. I want to tease something. I want to ask all of you to consider something. This channel, as you know, really built with a community of full-time employees. I had a conversation with Omar El Tarkari from the department, right, the video department, and he interviewed me yesterday. The podcast will be out in a couple of weeks. But we spent a lot of time talking about why full-time employees, Gen X, uh, baby boomers should create YouTube channels now. Now, why do I say that? You've heard me for a long time say you have a passion, you have a hobby, you have something you've been doing for 10 to 20 years. I strongly suggest, I strongly encourage, and if you do this, please tell me. I want to come support you. You should create a YouTube channel around that. Why? Well, there are several reasons. And we can look back at historical facts why this is important. Number one, when I retired at a moment's notice, I got depressed. And we have seen folks uh, leave the retirement and they don't live long, right? They, once they're done with their job, they live four years, it's not fun, and they unfortunately pass away and move on. I have found that having a YouTube channel, building a community, imploring, encouraging folks is such a great way to build a community and feel like you are having impact. It's an hour a day, it's two hours a day for me. For you, maybe it's two hours a week. In the end, if you start building now, you start building now, and you have retirement in the horizon in five, 10, 15 years, you will have an amazing community, you will be an authority in that space, you will have influence, and trust me, you will have fun. Second. By building it now, you are not distracted by money. You don't have to quit your job, burn the bridge, spend all this money on equipment. I am recording this from my phone with a wired microphone. I have done over a thousand videos on my phone before I got a camera. So again, you could do this all from your phone, live. It's just there for you. And then the next point, again, there's a whole lot coming out in that podcast. But again, I want you to have fun. I want you to build something that you are passionate about and give back. A lot of YouTube, whether you like it or not, skews, creators skew younger. I believe there is value and history and stories in Gen X and baby boomers creating a channel. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be big like Graham Stephan or even Ryan Pinader or any of those folks. You don't need to be. You build a community of five, 10,000, trust me, you will have fun. And if you build it now and then you have something to move to when you're done, trust me, your life will be better. You'll be, you will feel purpose, purposeful. And that is something wonderful. You don't want to get depressed. And then finally, folks, of course, we have two more people to congratulate. I like nothing better than sending out these cards. Let's congratulate Alberto. Alberto, congratulations for getting your golden ticket. Very proud of you. We'll be in the mail shortly. And Stephen, congratulations on your next card. Uh, again, folks, you can get as many of these as you would like. Uh, if you have closed a deal in the last year or so, and one rental at a time helped, please let me know about it. How do you do that? Direct message me on Instagram or go to my website, one rental at a time, and uh, send me an email right from there. So folks, have an amazing day. Take care of yourself. Remember, I wanna hear from you. Yes, no, Fed rate cut, March.
I wonder what the, I, I don't know. We'll see what it's like. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.